Hi, everybody. Kenny Kitsune here. People have asked me before, Kenny, where do you get such cute and awesome balloons? Like this one. Well, the truth is, I print them. And in the videos to follow, I'm going to discuss the supplies and services I used and the printing process. First, I'll make a few disclaimers. Any of the videos that I'm going to discuss and services and supplies will be linked in the description below. The process that I've learned how to produce this myself, I have learned by myself and watching the videos that I'm going to reference. I have not been paid by any company to endorse the uh, supplies that I use. And finally, the process that you're going to see was successful for me. The process may be different from you, where uh, you have access to different materials, in, where you live, and your living situation. So, of course, results will vary. So people have asked me before, Kenny, what's your deal with balloons? Well, they just remind me of a happy childhood. They're so soft and squishy and colorful and playful. And besides, I live by a very simple philosophy. Show me a kid who does not love balloons and I'll show you a very traumatized child. So about 10 years ago, I decided I wanted to have Kenny balloons. And I found a company called Melyloon.com, which sells 16 inch balloons. And this company uses Mexican occasional 16-inch balloons, and they are very soft and squishy and come in a wide assortment of colors. But uh, I've started realizing that these balloons started having issues. Um, after about a year, um, the dark color balloons don't even blow up uh, much. And I've had friends who found these balloons popped uh, a couple of months later, and they found that they've already started turning real gummy. So these balloons were unfortunately pretty cheap. Um, but then I decided I wanted big balloons. I wanted 24-inch balloons. And I've heard about furries making uh, printed balloons um, at their homes, uh, a couple of friends, uh, Affinity, Skepo, and Bolti, uh, make 24-inch and bigger balloons. And I've seen uh, some videos of uh, Skepo and Bolti making their balloons, hint, hint. And I wanted to try to learn how to do this myself. So after doing a whole bunch of research on materials and printing processes, I decided to start getting everything together and learn how to do it. And now I'll discuss the supplies that I use for making the balloons. So what's the most important thing you need when you print balloons? The balloons, of course. <laughs> well, here are a couple of examples of the balloons that I've used for printing so far. On the left, we have a Qualitex Q24 inch balloon. And on the right, we have a Tuftex TT24 inch balloon. Now both balloons have their pros and cons. The Qualitex balloons came with a wider variety of colors to include light blue, where the Tuftex do not. The Qualitex balloons came either bags of all of the same color or a bag of mixed colors, whereas the Tuftex were only sold in bags of all the same color balloons. The quality control of the Q24s are much better than the TT24s. I've gone through maybe a hundred Q24s and maybe one balloon would have a severe blister or a hole in it 
whereas the TT24s had at least one, maybe one in 25 had a bad blister or a hole in it. But there are a couple of advantages the tough tax have over the Qualitex. Uh, probably the biggest one is at the end of 2016, the Q24s were discontinued by uh, Pioneer Balloons, probably because they felt they were no longer profitable. Um, and as of the day that I am making this video, the Q24s that I have are at least a year and a half old. And they're going to start going old bad uh, soon. Whereas the TT24s are still being made and sold. The website that I get the balloons at are bargainballoons.com, which have a great shipping policy. No matter how many balloons you order, as long as you live in Canada or the United States, shipping is $9 per order. Now, if you live in another country, uh, you may have to check and see what the uh, shipping rate is for you. Or you may have access to different balloons, which are actually just as good as the Qualitex. Now, there are some distinctive differences between the two balloons. This is after the very first inflation after they were taken out of the package. The Q24 is more of a pear-shaped, and it has a larger neck versus the TT24 is more round, but it has a narrower neck. Whichever one you prefer, of course, is your preference. And here are the balloons deflated. And here, of course, are the next sizes. Now, the TT24, I can inflate with the number two size raft inflator, which is just about the right size. Whereas the Q24, I have to remove all of the inflators to get it to fit around the, uh, around the hose here and actually have to pinch it closed a little bit to actually inflate that. So that may be a little more of a convenience factor. Now, the process that I use for printing my balloons is called silk screening. This is a process where you take a screen with a pre-made design on it, you attach it to a press, then you take the object you want to print and put it under the press, you lower the screen onto the object, you put some ink on the screen, and you rub the squeegee across to spread the ink across the screen, then when you lift the screen, the pattern should be on your finished product. Now, because of the limitation of my uh, living space, I do this process outside. So, I have here a good sturdy work table, which uh, can hold plenty of weight up against it, and a single screen t-shirt press. Now this press I bought on eBay, and uh, the reason I chose it is because the table that would normally that you would normally put the uh, t-shirt on can be removed, and there's just enough space between the screen and the bottom of the table to put a 24-inch balloon under it. Now. I would like to be able to get a hold of a printing machine where I, well, it does horizontal printing. So I can print virtually any size balloon, you know, as, long, as big as the, uh, the press can handle. And um, either a press or a full automated machine like one I've seen in Japan. But, uh, I do not have the inclination to build something like that. I don't have the mechanical genius. So I do it with what I can get. And even though this press is kind of cheap, it does the job well. Now this is a can of 
rubber ink. It's made by a company called Union Process. I've used this particular brand because even though I am not a professional balloon printer, they are willing to sell it directly to me rather than having to go through a whole a retail uh, distributor. And it does come in a wide variety of colors. But be sure when you order your ink, if you're gonna do silk screening, make sure you get your ink that is made for silk screening. Otherwise you may wind up with the wrong kind of ink. Also, you're gonna to need to check your, the manufacturer to see what materials you can and cannot mix with it or use for cleaning. Now for mixing and cleaning up the ink, uh, here's a can of uh, mineral spirits. Um, you'll need to check with the manufacturer of the uh, latex ink to find out how much mineral spirits you need to use to mix with your ink. Uh, also, if you were able to get a hold of latex safe mineral spirits, that is what I would highly recommend. Because if you get this stuff on a balloon or on regular latex gloves, the results are sadly disastrous. Now, in the setup process, you're going to need to blend the mineral spirits with the latex ink. And rather than trying to do this with a stick, you can get one of these uh, paint mixers and an electric drill. Because the ink manufacturer will recommend a certain length of time that you'll need to mix the uh, ink and mineral spirits together uh, this is typically about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so, of course, it's smarter to use a uh, paint mixer like this one and a drill so you can just sit there and do it that way rather than just, you know, stirring with a, uh, a stick. Now, here is a squeegee that I ordered off of eBay. It a, has a simple wooden handle, and the blade uh, is a chemical-safe rubber blade. Uh, you will want to use a chemical-safe, chemical-resistant blade for this because the mineral spirits are quite harsh. You don't want this to come apart after your first printing. And now the moment I've been waiting for, the screen. This screen is made by a company called Anthem Printing. The screen features aluminum frame, a mesh screen which is glued onto the back of the frame, and a chemical resistant emulsion which is used for making the screen. The mesh is a 300 mesh count which is the minimum recommended uh, mesh count for uh, latex ink silk screening. Um, the mesh count refers to how many threads of mesh per inch on the screen. Kind of like uh, dots per inch on your TV or um, threads per inch on uh, quality bed sheets. The higher the mesh count on a silk screen, the finer the detail is going to be. If you're going to print a screen with very fine lines, you will want a higher mesh count, like maybe 500 or so. Uh, for basic bold line printing, like uh, seen here, a uh, 300 mesh count is sufficient, according to the ink manufacturer, of course. Now, something else you're going to need is masking tape or painter's tape. I recommend you use the wide angle tape because you'll actually get to use less of the roll to cover um, the screen with. You will want to cover the um, areas that the emulsion did not uh, get fully covered onto the screen. 
like around the edges or if the manufacturer put them in these uh, grid lines. If you don't cover them up, they will wind up on your finished item. You only want the design. So cover up everything around the design with the tape and just leave this small space uncovered and that way you'll be guaranteed that you'll have a cleaner print. Next, you will need good quality gloves. Uh, you're going to need disposable gloves and good chemical resistant gloves. The disposable gloves you're going to need for the printing and for the minor cleanup and you'll need the good chemical resistant gloves for the post printing cleanup. Again, because of the mineral spirits, if you are using latex safe mineral spirits, you can use rubber gloves. If you are not, I recommend nitrile because they're not made of latex, they won't come apart when you expose them to the mineral spirits. And then of course the chemical resistant gloves you'll need because you'll be using the mineral spirits to clean up your screen and tools afterwards. Now, during the printing process, after each balloon is printed, I want to hang the balloons up and uh, get them out of the way so I can make room for the next balloon. So I accomplish this by using some cotton twine, some wooden clothes pins and some uh, drywall picture hooks. Uh, these typically go by the names of uh, monkey hooks, gorilla hooks, or Hercules hooks. And I'll have the lines strung up across uh, in the living room and in my kitchen. Uh, the lines that I'll have set up will should have enough room for uh, 25 balloons at the most. And that's the end of this video. Unfortunately, because of the weather conditions, I will not be able to do any printing today. Uh, hopefully, uh, the weather will be more favorable next time so I can show you the setup process and printing process. So in the meantime, I'll catch you later. Bye.